it's, but yeah, it, it's. I mean, but really, are there that many codependencies that you couldn't just, you know, limit it down to like four or five and basically have a quick bullet point version like you do for Windows or OS X software? Well, I mean, so. don't you make software for a lot of times for an OS like you use the Win API or the Mac API or the GNOME API, KDE API, stuff like that? Yeah, well, it's like like that would probably be one of the codependencies on the box, you know, like Linux kernel version blah 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 GNOME. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like that would be like a requirement on the software GNOME or KDE. You know, it would say that. <laughs> it's like if it support if it works well with both, it works well with both. But if it's designed specifically for GNOME only, it would say GNOME. You must be running a GNOME Linux distro, and anyone who's running Linux would go, "Oh, I have GNOME." It's like sucks for all those KDE uh, I'm people and the their dumb widgets. Right now, the comments saying GNOME doesn't have a, a hard G; it's a silent G, isn't it? <laughs> You I know what? At least once per video now. I, I am going to call it GNOME until somebody tells me differently. <laughs> well, you'll it, get that in the comments. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. That's like... <laughs> but, uh, well, after, after hearing the head of the GNOME Foundation and the head of Ubuntu say it that way, I'm cool with, with saying GNOME. Yeah, I, I'm like, I there, I've it heard too many bigwigs call it GNOME. For me to, you know, yes. but, but I, if 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 you if somebody insists that I'm going to offend their virgin ears, fine, it's known. Okay, the G is silent. I get it. Why is the silent G in every all the packs made for gnome? Why is it gu, why is it ganache inside? It's like why why the what G? What about G edit though? Oh. Is it is it gonna edit? I think it's uh. G edit. It, it, it is G-edit, actually, so it's even worse. It's like... So it's, Inconsistency. Yes! Ah. Get it. <laughs> Sorry, off topic entirely. Well, no, not really, but to, well, that's actually right on topic with what we're saying. Right now, open source has gone a bit mad, and it makes sense to us because we're living in the middle of it. But to an outsider, we just confuse the hell out of them. <laughs> it's like, and that's the thing. It's like I, I, I'm not saying you need to lock down open source and proprietary it and, and, and collapse the number of distros. I'm just saying you need to make a cliff note to cheap cheat sheet. And, you know, and, and as soon as software developers start doing that and hardware manufacturers start doing that, you will instantly see whatever cheat sheet they adopt instantly appear on Linux distros home pages. You know, they'll be like, we match blah 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 and blah. So you know at a glance, okay, cool, I'm good. It's like, and, and that's not a bad thing at all. It's, it's like you, you, and then when you install Linux on grandma's computer, you say, okay, grandma, this is the thing to look for right here. This and this. If you see this and this, you're good. Grandma can follow those instructions. It's like, it's like, so, or, or, or am I being naive here? I still think a interactive tutorial would be needed for someone like Grandma. Oh, I, I, the box is, uh, the box standardization is but one thing. I think a tutorial is an important step of that, too. Anyway, um, I'm actually, I was actually looking, I, I've been looking at the, the second to last comment for a while, so. Uh oh, which one mm -hmm. here? Oh, yeah, that was actually what I was gonna suggest transitioning into next, anyways. Because <laughs> it's right in line with the theme that we're already on. It's like. Uh, go ahead, Lita, since you've been reading it. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Alright, so what it says is that it says make, um, make this applications open source but make software like Steam so that it has to be launched from a proprietary, proprietary application so it avoids people not paying for it slash piracy. And there's a problem with that is that it violates the new GPL. You cannot do that. A, it violates the new GPL. B, it violates the whole spirit of Linux and open source in general. Uh, and C... Uh, for those who haven't been paying attention, this is exactly what I'm scared to death Apple is beginning to do with Lion. Uh, so, at the, I, don't, I, I could never support that going on in Linux. And, and A, it wouldn't prevent piracy. And, and I can tell you why. People would hack around it. 
um, you know, the people who would pirate would hack around it. Uh, so it wouldn't it wouldn't actually serve to prevent piracy. What it would inevitably serve to do is hurt honest users because at some point there'd be some update or some glitch that would interfere with because they couldn't keep up with the closed source thing. Aside from the GPL conflicts, that it wouldn't be able to do a full validation, and this happens all the time with DRM, even though nobody likes to talk about it. It it it, it does in which you get a false positive that prevents validation, in which case nothing works. And you sit there and you twiddle your thumbs until they get around to updating it and fixing it. You could, you could do this with the GPL v2, though. But is that really the direction we want to go? No, but uh, <laughs> and that's what uh, Devo did, which is what Richard Stallman uses for his example of why it's bad. How do you stand on this one, Jordan? <laughs> um, not sure. I, I'm I'm more in the center. I, I actually it does violate the spirit of open source, but then again, I don't think that the spirit of of open source would is really the best kind of way to program games because I feel that you know open source is great when you're building stuff that you're going to keep building on, keep building on, you know big, you know, browsers and stuff like this and stuff that you're going to, you know, these big frameworks kind of things and big APIs, but games, you know, you can build the game APIs and the, and the graphics engines, but games are things where you advertise it a lot, you make a lot of money, a few years, it's not very popular for most games, you know, maybe even less than a few years, a few months, it's not very popular. And I don't, I see open source being very, very weak for that model, being the gaming model. The, the right. only exception to that would be like diehard engines on which thousands of games wind up being built because it's so which, popular. Which I'm saying that engines are great. Open source is absolutely the best for engine stuff that's going to be keep getting built onto. But the game itself, I just I just don't see it ahead. You know, it's uh, yeah. I, I yeah. I, I no. I, I I know the people who are going to raise the pitchforks and attack you. The modders. The modders are going to go, you know, I don't care if it's just me and five of my friends. I should be able to reprogram this game to do what I want. Right. But... <laughs> I, they can make it open to, you know, someone. It, it's just, uh, you know, it costs a lot of money to develop... To, to make a, a lot of games, what I see for games, it costs a lot of money to develop them. You make a lot of money back in a very short period of time. Sometimes you lose a lot of money in a very short period of time. Uh, yeah, exactly. You know, it, it's you know, if it's not if it if it's if it, it, it's not something that you know people are going to play for a very long time because you got to make the next thing. And I just don't see how that really works for something that's totally open well, well, source. No, and, and this is why I'm not against closed source stuff coming to to the Linux OS. I have nothing wrong with that. Hey, and, I, and if they want to make it closed source and it's something I want to buy, as long as they don't make me give up Linux to use it, I'm all for buying it and messing around with it for, like you say, on, on a thing like a game that, you know, I hope to have little mini sucks running around someday and I, if, they, if they want Spongebob, kill whatever, I'm like, okay, fine. That's, um, what, I would like to, uh, what I would like to see is uh, someone who makes games who will, you know, who will make the game, spend a lot of money, get the bunch of money back, and then once the game's not popular anymore, open source it so that if something's cool in the game, people can build upon it. I I'm actually glad you brought that up because that is that is a business model that is constantly left out of this, and, and th this actually is becoming a more and more popular business model, and that they, there, there's more and more companies that are feeling like niche things and basically they put it up and they go it cost us y dollars to develop this we would like that money back plus a little bit of margin for us so we need to sell blah copies and they report how many copies they've sold and they have like a pledge when we exceed that by like 500 copies or 100 or 50 or whatever we're then going to open source this and release it to everybody and release it under a GPL. And, yeah. and and that is a business model that is actually doing really well for a lot of things that it doesn't make sense 
initially, you, you will never be able to recoup the development costs in any kind of an open source, open environment model, but there's no reason after you've got your money back plus your profit plus your margins and your development for the next project to be greedy. Right. Because, I mean, after these games are bought, it's not like they're going to make any money off them anymore. So, I, I, I really do. Yeah, of course, there are they're obvious work, exceptions to that. Money. You know, it, I, 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 I know many people who would still to this day go buy a Counter Strike or Half Life or. or right. <laughs> so, but, but those games are far and money. few and in between. <laughs> it's like. It, it's, it's a very marginal compared to, you know, how much money they'll make off releasing a new game. And another good thing about this that I just thought of, if they do make it open source after they're kind of done making their profit off something that they spent a lot of money developing, is that, you know, if people, you know, people who do, who are buying that game when it's old, and people who are still playing the game because they think it's super fun, if they're begging for new features and stuff, the company, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to worry about that because the people, because it's open source. Because the community it. that's obsessed with it will continue to develop exactly. it free of charge. Exactly, they're going to continue developing and making features, thus making the people who bought the game feel like they had a better value by buying it. Yeah. Uh, well, let's say this is, a, this is a different mindset to wrap your head around. The idea one, that... One uh, immediate instance of that, actually, and a recent one, is uh, Frictional Games with Penumbra. Actually, yeah, that's true. That's they they took a great game, they open sourced it, uh, and then they made one even better that that they're selling at a relatively low price, and they may eventually open source that one once it's done what it needs to do, mm -hmm. which is freak everybody the hell out. Exactly. <laughs> well, no, it's like in the, you know honestly, ultimately, I see the companies that realize the symmetry of that, and that their customers are not the enemy. Their customers are people to make happy. <laughs> it's, it's like, and, 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 and it's very clear that some companies realize that, and then there's other companies that are like, we have to figure out how to kill our customers. They're out to steal from us. We have to kill them. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like, and, and in the long run, I don't see those companies doing as well. I, I don't see them being as profitable. I don't see them. It's like. It's, there's the free, there's the purists in the open source and free software community that are along the lines of, somewhere along the lines they decided money was bad. I do not think money is bad. I do not think being profitable is bad. I think being greedy is all hell, raping, and then punishing your customers for being stupid enough to give you money. I think that's bad. But I don't think doing right by them and reaching an agreement that's mutually beneficial to both of you is a bad thing at all. Because in the end of the day, if they're happy, they keep buying shit from you. <laughs> well, I'm kind of hoping that, uh, I don't know if you've heard much about it, Minecraft. I'm hoping that it will start to set a new model for development. Because it is, as far as I understand, it's one guy created a game in his basement <laughs> and uh, then gave it away. And then he created a second version, and it's in an alpha phase. And he has now made over five and a half million dollars on it. And and that's just you know, you pay a small fee for the game, and you can use it on as many systems as you want, and be happy with it. Well, no, and that that is exactly in line with what I was talking about earlier. You can yeah. spend hundreds of millions and billions of dollars fighting software piracy, or you can accept. That it's gonna happen no matter what the hell you do, and just say, "Fine, make go a do it." Game and make it an affordable price. Right. I mean, ten or fifteen bucks for something like like what Minecraft is. Uh, you you're almost stupid not to buy it if you like the game. Yeah. And if you don't like the game, if you don't like uh, the idea of paying for it, you can pay the the play the free version because there is a free one. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. that sounds like an ad for it. I'm anyway. No, no plug away. <laughs> I, I, I am a fan of it. I do play it. Because Actually, you know what? Let's do this. Thing. Let's do this right. Put the URL for where to buy it in the show notes. So when I so when I edit this, I can put it in the thing down here, so people can go look at it and screw it. When you go to buy it, make sure you you put in the box. Uh, the put in coupon code, code Twill. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they have that. It's all PayPal. Fifty percent off. I wonder how much money that guy has lost to PayPal. Honestly.